Did you know that Brazil is the only football nation to have won the World Cups on four different continents? And what's crazy is that none of this would have been possible without their exceptional playmakers and attacking midfielders who have worn the illustrious number 10 jersey. So, what happened to the 21 of the Salasau's number 10 shirt players? But first, we gotta travel back in time to 1942, when an unsung hero named Thomas Suarez da Silva, also known as Zizino, made his debut for Brazil on January 14th. But it wasn't until the 1950 World Cup that Master Ziza came into the limelight. Zizino was regarded as the greatest South American footballer in the late 1940s and the most complete South American midfielder of all time. In fact, Pele described him as one of Brazil's best players. I idolize Zizinu more than any other player. His passing, shooting, and positioning were frighteningly good. He excelled in every aspect and was the complete player. History might have remembered him differently if Brazil had won the 1950 World Cup. Unfortunately, the Seleção lost 2-1 to Uruguay at the Maracana Stadium. And Zizinu, being part of the team, had to bear the tag of a tragic hero even to this day. But for Jair Rosa Pinto, Brazil's failure to overcome Uruguay was his biggest regret. You see, Pinto is credited as the pioneer of Brazil's success as he helped the Seleção win the 1949 Copa America before finishing as runner-up in the World Cup the next year. He still holds the record for the most goals scored in a single Copa America, with nine in 1949. But the name Pinga wasn't exactly far-fetched. Jose Lazaro Robles, popularly known as Pinga, is one of the lesser-known Brazilian stars who played for Club Atlético Juventus, Portuguesa, and Vasco da Gama. He featured in over 466 matches for his club sides and recorded an impressive 250 goals. Not much is known about his impact in the 1953 Copa America and the 1954 World Cup, but legend has it that he rarely played a game without scoring. Yes, he was that amazing. But thank goodness Pele came along. Or dare I say Edson Aranches Donas... You know what? Let's just stick to Pele, the only player in football history to have won three World Cups. The man many called the king of football. Now that makes sense, cause how else do you explain scoring 77 goals in 92 appearances for your national team? Or achieving the Guinness World Record with a total of 1,283 career goals during a playing career that spanned from September 7, 1956 to October 1, 1977. Not even Messi or Ronaldo comes close. Pele holds the record for the most hat-trick scores ever, with 92 goals, and he even scored 8 goals in a single match against Batafogo in the 1964 Campeonato Palista. He absolutely had a successful career, and it was time to pass the torch. Turned out that a young rivalino, who was known for his signature mustache, was on hand to take things up a notch, and the inventor of the famous skill move, the Elastico. It was so popular that this move has been adopted and used by many players ever since. After trying his luck as futsal as a kid, Vivalino became a professional football player at Corinthians. His close control, skill with the ball, and left-footed abilities quickly made him a fan favorite and earned him the nickname Ore do Park, which means King of the Park. Among Corinthians fans, he was also a key member of Brazil's 1970, 1974, and 1978 World Cup teams and wrapped up his international career with 26 goals in 92 appearances for Brazil. But ever since Pele described football as a beautiful game, no one has embodied that more than Zico, nicknamed the White Pele. Zico played three World Cups from 1978 to 1986 with Brazil and won the hearts of millions of people. Zico was so phenomenal that when Pele looked at successors of the number 10 shirt, he admitted, Zico is the only one who resembles my playing method. Pele couldn't have been more right, as Zico scored 48 goals in 71 caps for Brazil. But while players like Zico were learning from mentors, Milton Quiroz da Paiso, better known as Tita, had other plans. Tita played 31 international games for Brazil between 1979 and 1990 and scored 6 goals. He started playing football when he was just 11 and joined Flamengo at 18. Of course, it was the most popular team in the country at the time, and he made a lasting impression. Tita called time on his career after scoring 55 goals in 125 league appearances. Now, the 90s dispensation had just begun, and one of the number 10s that consistently topped the charts was Rai Souza Vieira de Oliveira, 
Rai's brilliance was on full display during the 1992 Intercontinental Cup in Tokyo, where he dazzled Barcelona's dream team led by Johan Cruyff. This earned him a move to PSG, where they continue to sing his name to this day. On the international stage, being a brother of the iconic Socrates posed a bit of a challenge, but Rai still found a way to help his country win the 1994 World Cup and earned 49 caps for the national team, during which he scored 16 goals. But the next number 10 shirt guy was known as a set-piece specialist, and that will be Jose Ferreira Neto. Neto is recognized as one of Salazar's best free-kick takers and one of the most versatile players of the early 90s. He was part of the Brazilian under-23 team that won bronze at the 1983 Pan American Games and was subsequently named to the 1988 national squad that went to Seoul for the Summer Olympic Games. Neto scored a total of five goals in 17 appearances for Brazil, but his constant disagreements with referees and club bosses left a negative impression. Like the time he spat in referee Jose Apresedo de Oliveira's face, which earned him a four-month suspension. But not every number 10 couldn't handle a bad temper. Definitely not Jorge Ferreira de Silva, better known as Palinha. The then youngster had a pretty great career during the golden years of 1992 and 1993, playing alongside stars like Rea, Toninho Cerezo, and Leonardi, among others, to win the Copa Libertadores and Intercontinental Cup twice in those years. During his prime, Palinha was called up to the national team and earned 16 caps, but he never featured for his country since 1993. Perhaps Palinha just wasn't lucky. But the same can't be said about Leonardo Araujo, who has continued to enjoy success even after his football career. Leonardo is a versatile player who began his career at just 17 with the Brazilian Cup Flamengo in 1987. It was a dream come true for him, because he had the opportunity to play alongside his heroes, Zico, Leandro, Bebeto, and Renato Gaucho and he won his first Brazilian championship with them. He later joined Valencia before returning to Brazil briefly with Sao Paulo in 1993. However, when it comes to the World Cup, Leonardo will definitely be remembered for the 1994 incident when he elbowed Tab Ramos on the head, knocking him out before halftime. The Brazilian star player was suspended by FIFA for four games. As for Ramos, as crazy as it sounds, it took him years to recover from a fractured skull. Another player who hasn't quite recovered from wearing this iconic number 10 shirt is Rivaldo Ferreira. It's fair to say that he doesn't always get the widespread recognition he serves. And that's not just because of a few controversial moments. As a tall winger comfortable playing centrally, Rivaldo was nearly unstoppable for a long time. He terrified defenders and had an impressive ability to deliver crosses. And let's not even get started on his incredible shooting ability. His performance at the 1999 Copa America, where he tied with Ronaldo for the golden boot with six goals each, earned him the Ballon d'Or that year. But there's absolutely no denying that this combination with Ronaldo and Ronaldinho at the 2002 World Cup, where Brazil won their fifth title, will always remain a fond memory fans won't forget anytime soon. And who's going to forget the attacking midfielder who grew up on the streets of Sao Paulo? Juninho Paulista started his career at the Ituano FC before moving to Sao Paulo and later to Middlesbrough, where he's fondly remembered as the little fella today. It makes sense when you consider that what Juninho lacked in size, he made up for in skill. Juninho made his debut for the Brazil Olympic team in 1996, scoring one goal in six appearances, and for the senior team in 1995, scoring four goals in 52 appearances. He eventually announced his retirement in 2008 after playing for several teams, including Celtic, Palmeiras, and Sydney FC. But the next number 10 short holder is the only player who have scored 23 goals in a single game at age 13. It was at this point that the world realized that a football deity had hit the stage. Yeah, I get it, Ronaldinho needs no introduction. But it'll interest you to know that he's the only player ever to have won a World Cup, a Copa America, and Confederations Cup, a Champions League, a Copa Libertadores, and a Ballon d'Or. He could score and dribble. His free kick accuracy was great and his skills were unmatched. Trust me, none of that would have been possible if he hadn't subscribed to our channel. Ronaldinho knows what it takes to be a superstar. That's probably why he hit the like and share buttons. So what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button right now. But none of that could stop him from getting into trouble. I mean, 
big trouble, cause after his Brazilian and Spanish passports were confiscated over tax evasion in July 2019, he and his brother tried to enter Paraguay with a fake passport, and it went all over the news. Man, that's embarrassing, bro. But not as embarrassing as when one man scored a decisive goal in a 2-1 group game over Mexico with a 25-yard strike. You see, Alexandro de Souza is known for way too many reasons. His eye for the goals, creative playmaker abilities, and so many others. But the most prominent was his time at Fenerbahce, where he became the highest scoring foreign player of all time in the Super League. I wouldn't exactly call him lucky cause some say he lacks significant pace and physical power, but he made up for it with his technical skills, reading up the game, passing and ability to provide many assists for his teammates. So it doesn't come as much of a surprise that he racked up 12 goals in 48 appearances for his national team. Ok, now the year is 2002 and a 20 year old boy was called up to the national squad of the Korea slash Japan World Cup. The boy, named Ricardo Isaacson dos Santolaite, or as you may know him, Kaka, was out to leave a lasting impression. Of course, his performance was phenomenal, and he continued to represent the team in various tournaments, including CONCACAF and the FIFA Confederations Cup. His career for both his clubs and country was marked by his creative passing, dribbles, pace, and goal scoring from midfield. In fact, Kaka was widely regarded as one of the best players in the world and considered by pundits as one of the greatest of his generation. And for a man with 29 goals in 92 appearances for his country and 185 goals in 565 appearances for various teams, it's no surprise that he won the Ballon d'Or in 2007, before the Ballon d'Or domination era of the GOAT Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. But this next player is not a male international player. Yes, I'm talking about Marta Vieira da Silva. Marta holds the record for being Brazil's top international goal scorer of any gender, with 115 goals. And that's not all. She has scored the most goals in a World Cup for both genders, with 17 goals. She was a member of the national team that won silver medals at the 2004 and 2008 Summer Olympics. As if that's not enough, she also won the FIFA World Player of the Year a record six times, five of them consecutively from 2006 to 2010. But despite all of her achievements, the women's team just never won the World Cup. The closest they came was in 2007, when they lost 2-0 to Germany at the finals. But hey, how about we travel back in time, when Diego Riva started to show his talent when he was just six at Commercial FC. The kid showed massive potential and earned his way up to Porto and a few other clubs. Diego was called up for the national squad ahead of the 2004 Copa America and 2006 World Cup, the 2007 Copa America and the 2008 Olympics. He was also known for his trickery and ball skills. In 2023, Flamingo was his last club and remains an influential player for the former club. But none of that comes close to what Neymar has done. You see, Neymar burst into the scene so quickly that he seemed destined to become Brazil's greatest ever player. He developed his early career with Santos and moved to Barcelona, where the deadliest attacking trio feared by many European clubs called MSN was formed. In 2017, Neymar felt overshadowed by Lionel Messi and Luis Suarez. Later, his career at Paris Saint-Germain was mirrored by injuries, but he still performed superbly and is regarded as one of the highest peak performers in League One history. Nothing can change the fact that Neymar has always been an indispensable player for Brazil's national team during its tough times, carrying the team on his back after most of the superstars retired from football. After all, what do you make of a guy with 79 goals in over 128 caps for the Seleção? Neymar is still out with an injury, playing in the Saudi league. Rodrigo now has the honor of wearing the iconic number 10 of the Seleção. The young striker, who is one of the great hopes of Brazilian football, has already shown his talent on the European scene. As of making this video, Rodrigo has a market value of 110 million euros and has scored 73 goals in 299 games and 6 goals in 26 caps for Brazil. With number 10 comes immense responsibility, and he knows he'll have to follow in the footsteps of the great Brazilian number 10s who have made history in world football. Will Rodrigo step up his game with the huge responsibility of the number 10? Also, who do you think is the greatest Brazilian player to don the number 10 jersey?